Uh, these examples are taken from these two very nice surveys papers. Um, and if you are interested, you can actually look at those. Um, so let's move this one. So here's an example from this paper. So there is a stop sign, suppose assume there's a self-driving car. And so you put this perturbation and then the classifier, instead of recognizing stop, it will recognize the speed limit. And then, you know, that can be a problem because, you know, if it doesn't stop, then um, slow down, but then there will be accident. So that's a very dangerous thing for security. Here's another example where the idea is to detect objects and this video will play here. Um, and so as you see the first person, I don't know why the video, okay. First person is being detected correctly, but the second person has this perturbation and it's not detected at all. It's detecting a chair and it will detect some other objects, but uh, in the also on the left side is detecting chair even though the second person guy is, you know, moving a lot and waving hands and so on, and he's not detected at all. Now he's gonna take that sign and then turn it around. Then he's detected as a person. And uh, <clears throat> so that is the, the problem that uh, these machine learning systems are vulnerable to these adversarial attack. And you will <clears throat> learn that how to actually fool the system. So now it's being, um, now the second person, as you see, is not being detected. So then this uh, first person, the one on the right is detected correctly. So it's pretty interesting uh, <clears throat> video. It shows you all these problems uh, which can happen with these uh, classifiers, object detection, uh, chair, person, and maybe some other other objects. So, okay, so you got an idea, so let's move on. So this is another example where you can fool the face recognition uh, and uh, do the impersonation. So this is a paper, there are these um, three authors, um, these two and this one third. And uh, <clears throat> so these are the authors, um, this one, this one, and this one. So um, what they have done that if you wear these glasses here, then this person is recognized as this lady, Milia Zovich. And if this other author, which is this one, if she wears a glasses, um, then is recognized as this author. Now, then this author, if you wear glasses, recognize this Carson Daly. So you can actually basically change the ID of person just wearing the, these glasses and this is basically perturbation, you're changing the class. So that's a big problem. So here we are attacking the semantic segmentation. Now semantic segmentation, as you know, that each pixel we classify, whether it belongs to a person, belongs to a road, belongs to the cloud, building, and so on. Now here, um, network prediction is fine, but when you, um, uh, I'm not actually showing this one here, the image is not there. But anyway, so the, the another image was where the person all the pixel from the person were removed. And uh, uh, that was the class which was attacked. Um, I, will, I think I'll put that back. Uh, so how it is last year. So this is on the attacking the semantic segmentation because again, the semantic segmentation, what you are doing, you are classifying each pixel and each pixel has classes. So it can have the road, building, sky, person, car, and so on. As you saw an earlier thing, that we were misclassifying a person. There was no person. So here the same way, now we'll misclassify a, a pixel. So here's a, another example of uh, semantic segmentation object detection. So here's an image with the dogs, and this is the perturbation. And so when you do semantic segmentation, it's correctly 
recognize uh, these other dogs. But when you add the perturbation, then this recognizes a train, these pixel recognizing train. Similarly here, without the perturbation, you have correct burning boxes on the dogs. But here, after the perturbation, then you get this one, the pink one is actually a person. So that's a problem. Um, you can also change the facial expressions, facial attributes and gender. So if you take this person with a clean image and add the perturbation, then um, this changes from wearing lipstick to not wearing lipstick, okay? Uh, similarly, it's a female picture, you add this perturbation, then it becomes from female to male. So uh, here's another example where <clears throat> we are taking this picture from the cell phone and this is the uh, washer and uh, without the perturbation, it recognized as a washer with this confidence, but when the perturbation then recognize, you know, as a safe. Or is another example, uh, another picture and uh, recognize as a safe with this percentage and loudspeaker with this. So these are the examples of the attack. And this was used by, I think, TensorFlow from Google, their demo. So also these kind of attacks can happen on the <clears throat> 3D printer. Uh, objects printed by 3D printer. And so this is a picture, this object of turtle. And then you take pictures of turtle and then in all these uh, is uh, classified as a rifle. And there's only one and it's classified as the other but never classified as a turtle. So that's a big problem. Um, then this is another example where we have a object here on the road and we are getting a LIDAR, which is the um, regular cameras or the CCD cameras, RGB video they give you. But LIDAR is the light uh, detection ranging, which give you 3D point cloud. So the 3D point cloud. And you can also use those to detect the objects and this is detected correctly, this object here on the road. But when you add the perturbation, then this pine cloud looks like that and it's not detected. So that's uh, another problem. Here is the example where you are only attacking one pixel. You just make change one pixel. Uh, <clears throat> actually, this is a picture of the ship, but when you change one pixel, it recognizes a car with 99.7%. Here is a picture of a horse, but it's recognized as a frog. And this is a deer recognized as an airplane. This is a horse recognized as a dog. Dog recognized as a kid, bird recognized as a frog. And car is airplane, deer as dog, and so on. So 67% of these images are food. This is a C410. And this is uh, <coughs> Imaginate. And here the impact is not that much, but still 16% are wrong. So cup goes to soup ball, which is not that bad, but this base net goes to paper towel, this goes joystick and so on. So um, this attack, as you saw, can be on the images, can be on the LIDAR data, um, and uh, <clears throat> It can also be on NLP, on the sentences, on the language. So one of this uh, very popular model is um, BERT, um, which is the <clears throat> bi-directional encoding representative for a transformer. And so um, we have a sentence, um, which is this, which is a review of a movie. And this, um, recommender system is saying that this is a positive comment, you know, it's a positive label. Now what we do, we just swap one later. So the beautiful is spelled like this. And then the system says a negative review. Here we drop one later, okay, from here to here. And then it's also say negative. 
So that's a <clears throat> pretty serious problem. So this um, is changing one character, it goes from 90% to 45%, so it's about half. So, um, <clears throat> so the project description we already did. Now, uh, let me uh, talk about um, some techniques, types of adversarial attacks, which, uh, <clears throat> which are popular. And um, so the terminology before we have, we are looking for the perturbation. And these perturbations are, we want to change, we want to make changes to an image. And um, so these are the adversarial perturbation, perturbation which are designed to attack the model. Okay, they are the adversary. Um, and then when we add these uh, perturbations, so we'll get adversarial images. Uh, those images which have been altered, which are changed to attack. So, there are several types of attacks we will learn. So it's white box attack. So there we, so we are going to always attack a class, you know, deep learning model, a classifier. Um, these model, as you know, contain different layers, lots of these convolution layer, fully connected layer, the soft mix and so on, pooling. So um, now each, uh, model has these parameters which are learned, the weights of these filters and so on. So um, the white box attack is that, that you have access to those weights or those models um, and the last function, what's the prediction, what's the last function and all this thing. Um, so that is the, um, the white box attack um then black box attack is that we don't have the access to those weights or the derivatives and so on so um now other type of attack is one shot that we do just one single calculation and we generate this perturbation image adversarial image and uh, then we attack the network in other cases, uh, we will have multiple steps because the method will be iterative and that's called multi-shot. So um, now um, one kind of attack is called target attack, which will change the classification to specific label. So as you saw, you know, the label can change, the correct label is dark, but it will become airplane. So this targeted, we are, we are targeting particular class. The other one is untargeted where we just want to make it wrong. We want to just from the dog, we want to make it any other label, not a dog. So that is the uh, untargeted attack. So um, we need to know um, in these uh, different methods, we have to have a good idea about the norm of a vector because all these attacks will be described using the norm. So um, if you have a vector, then the P norm is defined like this. So we have a vector and uh, <coughs> this, um, <coughs> We'll take the different elements of the vector. This actually should be the X, uh, XI and not the AI, there's a mistake here. So we'll take the different element of the vector, each element from I goes one to N, whatever the length of vector is. We'll take the absolute value and make it a power P and add them up. And then we take a one upon P, P at root of that. So that is called P norm, okay? So now um, simple uh, example is the Euclidean norm uh, or which is called L2 norm. So here the P is equal to. So we'll take each element of the vector and um, 
square it, take the absolute value square, the same thing, we add it up, and uh, then we take a square root of that. So the Euclidean norm, or Euclidean distance, as you know, uh, which is simple. So here P is equal to two. Then we have L1 norm, where we P is equal to one. And uh, <clears throat> we'll just take the absolute value, add them up, and that'll become L1 norm of this vector. So these A1, A2, all these are the elements of this vector X. Then we have L infinity norm, where we will take the, <clears throat> so this is the correctly defined here. Um, these are different elements of the vector X. And uh, we'll take each element, take the absolute value. So we'll find the maximum element from all those elements in a vector and that become L infinity norm, okay? So these are the norms which you know you should know because we'll be using them again and again. So here's a very good example of what these norms <coughs> actually look like. <coughs> so these are the different values of P here. So when P is 0.25, so we are looking at this kind of region. So when P is two, which is more intuitive, you have learned this, this is like a circle in the two dimension. So we are looking at this um, circle um, and uh, this is of uh, radius one. And this, <clears throat> we look at uh, the L2 or the Euclidean norm. And this is um, where P is less than one and this is P is one. And then we, if we can keep increasing the P, then this is a P infinity. Now the shape actually is like a square and this each side is one. So that's kind of thing that we are looking at the range uh, <clears throat> that how far we can go. So, um, so the terminology is that we take image and we get the perturbation we multiply by this epsilon, and then we add it up, and we get this image, and that this is the perturbed image, our adversarial image. So one of the first method uh, is called FOSS gradient sign method. And this is uh, pretty simple. Um, so this is one shot, it is untargeted, and it is white box. So untargeted means that we just want to change the label, mis mislabel it, that's it. So, um, so it's fast compute, it's effective in fooling models and change every pixel into X, in X to follow the gradient. So the way it works is this. So the, here we have the loss function and uh, when you train a network, as you know that we want to find the theta, which are the weights of the, the network. We are given an image and we are given this label and uh, we <coughs> differentiate, find the gradient of the loss function. And uh, depending on the gradient, we change the weights and that's a way gradient descent or stuck as a gradient descent work. So now what we do, we already have trained the network. We have a trained network and we want to take that. So what we are gonna do is we will put an image X and find the loss and differentiate the loss with respect to X, which is an image. Okay, so typically when we train the network, we differentiate the loss with respect to weights of the filters. But here, when we are take, we differentiate with respect to X because we want to find out what X we should have so that this loss increases, okay? Because when we increase the loss, then the classification will be wrong. It will give us a wrong prediction. So we find 
that gradient and we only look at a sign of that gradient, then we add this epsilon in that direction to the X and we get the perturbed image. So it's very simple. So that's why it's called sign grade, gradient sign. That's what we are doing here. And so fast. <clears throat> so, um, so in this one, theta is the model parameter, X is input, it's a clean image. Y is a label of X, J is a training loss function, sign converts, it becomes one minus one or zero, and this is a perturbation. So here is the graphical explanation. So suppose this is our loss function, which is a function of X, because we want to make changes in X. We want to make changes in X, which is the image. So let's say we are here, then we want to find out what epsilon we should make so that this loss function increases. Here's increasing. So this much, if we add that, this will increase. If suppose we are here, then we want to add this one because this weight will increase. So that's the idea here, okay? So now the you know, generalization of this, this was just one shot. We just added once, that's it. But we can keep adding these. We can have iterative method, okay? So this is multi-shot because iterative, it's untargeted again, and it's a white box. So very simple. So we start with um, the first uh, iteration, zeroth iteration. It will become the image itself. Then we do iteratively like this. So we look at the um, adversarial X at nth iteration. From that, we get the adversarial image at n plus one iteration. So we take the loss function. Again, we have an image uh, and you know previous iteration. We have a label, we find a gradient, we find the sign. Alpha is this epsilon, uh, you know, the step function, we add that to the X and then we clip. So clip is that we want to <clears throat> make sure when we add the perturbation, then the summation should not go beyond, say if the image is from zero to 55, then it should not go beyond that. If it is between minus one to one, it should not go beyond that. So that's called clipping. We want to restrict because then if it's more than that, it won't look at an image. So alpha is step size and clip ensures the values are within this range. And um, so then there is um, another um, variation of the FGSM, which is called momentum iterative. Uh, again, very simple idea. And you guys have used the momentum when you train your network. Um, so it is a multi-shot. It's untargeted, white box attack. And uh, <clears throat> so here we will take the gradient um, sign at um, t plus one iteration, we have alpha step size, we will add that to xt and we'll get xt plus one. So the gt, the gradient, um, which is obtained from gt plus one is obtained from gt, um, which is, this is the momentum that we, we don't want in each iteration, we don't compute the new gradient, but we want to compute the new gradient and multiply it to the previous gradient with this uh, fraction. And this is the gradient at xt. And um, we just divide by magnitude is like a uh, unit vector. And so that keeps somehow momentum in the gradient as compared just ignoring the previous gradient. So this mu is the your decay factor as you know, as you have been using in your training system, training neural network. So this is start GT zero and like that. So, so the most interesting um, uh, attack is called PGD. 
uh, projected gradient descent. And I think this is a pretty successful attack and um, pretty, pretty simple and interesting. So um, PGD attack is, um, it's basically generalizing generalization of the um, basic iterative uh, gradient attack. Uh, it's multi-shot untargeted white box attack. And uh, <clears throat> so um, this will um, be very similar that as we were doing, we take the loss function, um, which depend on the theta, the image and the label, find the gradient. Now gradient, remember we have one gradient with respect to X, X is an image, sign and the step size we add to the previous one. But after that, then we are going to project, we are going to do projection of this. And then whatever we get a projection, then that will become the X, XT plus one prime. So um, that is the projection is the main difference here. And uh, we want to, so it's like a, intuitively it's kind of similar to clipping, but it is more interesting and more formal. So this will project into L infinity or any other norm. So, um, so let's talk about a little bit about this projection. Uh, <clears throat> so as we, as we discussed, you know, there are the different norms, L1, L2, L2 is Euclidean norm, L infinity, and you know, other one. So, um, so if you have vector V, then we want to project that vector on the unit ball. So this is a vector V and uh, <clears throat> so um, what we have, so this, the radius of this, now we are using the Euclidean norm L2, okay? So as you remember the, when P is equal to two, then the shape of this ball looks like a circle because you know, it's a center, this is, all these points are equal distance at one. And we are looking at the unit, one, radius one. So the idea is that if we have a vector V, we want to project that on L2 unit ball, okay? So this is L2 unit ball. So what we are gonna do, we are gonna take this one and connect to the center and uh, projection of this will be here where it intersect at this place, okay? So um, what we can write down is we have a vector V, we wanna project that. Now, if the, <clears throat> if the vector, this point is outside, then we will take the V and divide by the magnitude, you get a unit vector. And uh, so the direction will maintain, but we want to keep it within one. So we'll pick the maximum as one. But if it is inside the unit, inside the ball, then we'll just take this unit vector because you know it's within within this one. So that's the that's a constraint we are putting that we are projecting. Projecting direction is the same. Now, if it is here, then this is the projection. But if I can believe it's here, we just take that one as it is, like here. So that's a projection on the uh, unit ball in L two. Okay. Now, if the and that was uh, center was on the origin. This is a zero zero and this is a thing and that's what we did. Now it can happen that the <clears throat> center is not origin. So what we are gonna do that we will um, displace the ball and scale it. So we'll translate and scale the coordinate system, then we'll translate and scale back. So here's the idea. So we will take the vector V, we will translate it and um, since this epsilon is the radius, it's not one, so we divide by that. And again, we'll do this kind of things as we did before. 
the one or this uh, ma the magnitude of that vector. And uh, then once we are done projecting, then we'll come back, we'll add this translation and we'll do the inverse of this that we'll multiply with this, we're dividing here and then pick the maximum from one of this one. So that is the projection L2 norm. So the project, uh, um, projected gradient descent PGD, um, so simple way is that we start from random perturbation in LP ball around the sample. We'll take gradient step in the direction of greatest loss and we project perturbation back into P ball and those then we'll keep repeating these steps um, until convergence. So here's the example. So let's say we have a sample here and let's say this is a 2D uh, surface. <clears throat> so, and this color shows that this one is the highest loss. This is the lowest loss. So let's say we start randomly from here. We take different steps and this converges at this place. And um, this will be the, um, the largest loss, but we started from here. This will converge here. This will be the largest loss here, highest loss. And this will be the perturbation which we are going to add. So this projected gradient descent. Um, so then there's another method, uh, which is uh, <clears throat> called the limited memory BFGS. Um, this is the, is the name of the authors who came up with this method. It's called Bryden, Fletcher, Goldfarb, Shen, Olgarten. So, um, <clears throat> The idea is that this method is again multi-shot, it's untargeted and white box attack. And uh, it is slow to compute. And so this is the main idea that we want to take um, the image X, we want to add the perturbation R so that it's uh, Level becomes L. So, and we want to make sure that. So, we're talking about this uh, image plus limited memory um, this optimization is method. This norm. And so, what so, we have is that we want to, um, uh, given an image, we want to add this perturbation R. Again, these are taken from different uh, papers. So, you know, notations will vary, but I'll explain in every case. So, here the perturbations are we add that perturbation to X, then we want to change the label A. And we want to make sure that again, this when we add the perturbation to X, then this is within this uh, zero to one because it's an image, okay? So, um, so now we have two um, kind of um, things to minimize. So we can combine these two uh, in this one using the, what's called Lagrangian multiplier C. So we want to minimize this and we want to minimize this also. So this is a standard uh, optimization, a minimization method and it's a nonlinear function. So there are many, many methods to do that. Um, and uh, typically uh, you use the gradient, just, you can use the gradient descent also, but it, it won't work because it will get in local maximum, local minima. So good methods are the, like a Newton methods and different quasi Newtons, you know, different versions of Newton methods. So basically this is a quasi Newton method uh, they came up with. And the main thing is in this, that instead of gradient descent, you find just a gradient, but these Newton methods, you have to find the Hessian, which is a second derivative and uh, which uh, Newton method always give a very quick convergence. It is the quadratic convergence. If the initial estimate is good, then you can converge very quickly. Uh, gradient descent won't, will converge slowly. Um, but the problem is that it is uh, require a lot of computation. 
because you had compute second derivatives, a matrix, ACM. Um, so, but many of these nonlinear methods, we have to use these kind of these kind of uh, approaches, and that's what uh, these guys use. So that is the limited memory um, void and, and so on. This method. So then there's a, another method called Arlini method, and um, this is actually also white box, and this is um, similar to the previous method. Um, this can generate a take with different norms, and um, it is 100% success on MNIST, C4, and ImageNet. And um, uh, so they do the change of variable um, in perturbed image so that always reside in the range zero to one. And um, so this is their minimizing functions. So the similar thing that we want to add the perturbation, this delta, and then we want distance between the X and original image and perturbed image should be small. Um, so what they do is they apply this tangent hyperbolic to um, make, uh, make this between minus one to one. And um, it's like activation function, as you guys know. So um, that way, then they want to um, add that to the X. So Delta essentially to find in terms of K, uh, find the K, apply tangent hyperbolic, and then uh, plus one, and then minus X is our Delta. So that is the colony Wagner attack. Um, so then there's another method called deep full binary, uh, deep full method, uh, which uh, <clears throat> looks at the, uh, it's a very different way to uh, do that tech. And so you can look at these a binary linear classifier. So it's a iterative untargeted white box attack. And it is um, smaller perturbation than FGSM. And um, let's assume the boundaries are linear to find the closest points not in the boundary. So now a simple case will be that you have the affine classifier. So you have this binary classifier, two classes. So if it is, this is positive, then it's one class. If it is negative, another class is very similar to SVM as you have learned. So um, we will look at the value of function um, and based on that, we can you know, uh, find the, which class belongs to. So the main thing is to find this boundary and that's where you learn uh, the support vectors and so on in SVM. So now, um, so this is the affine classifier, very simple version of that linear classifier. Um, these are your weights and this is the X. In this case, we have a 2D and some bias. So then what we want to do, we want to find this distance. So if, if we have the X zero here, if we move on this side of the boundary, then class will change. And that's the way you can attack, okay? So um, we want to find the R so that the sine of X zero plus R is not equal to sine of F of X zero, okay? Because we want to change its signs, change with the class. And so this R will become the, this perpendicular distance of this is W upon the, you know, the unit vector divided by magnitude and the value of this. And that's basically is the perturbation. So, um, so the, now that was the affine classifier, but if you have, you know, general binary classifier, then we can linearize that and um, then we can compute the um, perturbation. So if you have linear function, we look at the first derivative of the first derivative term. And so this will become f of x i plus derivative of f gradient and then r i, that's a perturbation. So we want to um, find this perturbation Ri so subject to this constraint. 
So if from here, we can easily find out what should be the RI. So that is the algorithm here. So we start with uh, <clears throat> input image X, we have a classifier F, we want to find our perturbation R head. We initialize X with X zero and first iteration zero. So as far as the sine of XI and sine of F of X zero is equal, then we'll keep doing that. So we'll find the first perturbation RI using this. So we will get whatever that is. We add that to XI, get the next XI plus one increment, we keep doing that. And then we will return this, the summation of that. And that is the uh, deep fool for binary classifier. Now, um, one, when you have multi-class classifier, so you have these boundaries, you know, this is one, this is another one, this is another one. So you want to, you start from this X zero and you want to, uh, first is you want to approximate these boundaries by the lines, the polyhedron, you know. So these are the, these can be curved line. So they're not really um, uh, linear binary. So, um, so then each iteration, we have a vector that reaches the polyhedron. We move, keep moving from that uh, boundary to compute this uh, perturbation and that's a way we will um, attack this classifier. So we are gonna discuss, we are gonna spend whole lecture on this because this is a pretty, pretty foundational paper. Uh, next week, we'll talk more about this. Um, so that is the deep food. So as I said, I have uh, taken these um, um, slides from these two survey papers. So if you are interested, you can look at those again in, in detail. Now, the last two topics before we end. So one is these attacks we talk about, they were specific to the sample. So we were taking the image and we were um, finding perturbation for that image to change its class. So now it'd be interesting to have one perturbation which works for all images. So these are called universal attack or universal perturbation. Second thing is that um, now how we can do the defense, you know, somebody attacks and how we can get rid of, how we can defend that attack. So adversarial defense. So I quickly talk about, again, we will discuss these papers in detail. So these are slides from our collaborator, Dr. Mia at the University of Western Australia. So he actually visited us and gave a talk uh, last year. And so, um, so this is a paper, Universal Adversarial Perturbation um, from the same guys who did the deep fool. It's a very good paper, we'll discuss that also. It's already in the list of the schedule. So we want to come up with a single perturbation to fool a network on any image with high probability, okay? So these perturbation generalize well across different models, posing threat to deep learning in practice, okay? So here's example, uh, as you see that this is one perturbation. So we take the flagpole image, it changes to Labrador, the dog. And we take, um, say this thresher uh, changes again this, then we take a grill, then it changes to J and you know, joystick to this one. And uh, here you see, the balloon to again the dog and so on, Tibetan uh, mastiff and so on. Here it fails, it seems. So, um, so that's the idea, and the objective is that we have a <clears throat> image, um, say n-dimensional, you know, vector image can be represented, and then uh, it uh, <clears throat> we want to map to the RC because C is the number of classes we have. Um, so we want to define K hat is the class which has the maximum value. So this uh, will give us the, for a given image X, it will give you a vector 
or each of the class will have some value as you know from softmax so we want to pick the number uh, k uh, for which is the maximum so that's what you do you get a vector and whichever element is maximum you say that's a class so we will represent by k here so um, we want to do perturbation means that we want to add the perturbation v so that the class of x plus v is not the same as class of x and of course that this has to be bounded by by this epsilon by p norm um, so this is the kind of definition of this thing that we want to um, probability of any image from a distribution mu, um, the class of X plus V is not class of X, should be greater than one minus delta. And so there are these definitions though. So delta is called fooling ratio. And of course the, um, this um, V is a desired perturbation. Uh, and um, the, uh, <clears throat> the epsilon is the norm threshold. So um, their method is um, interesting. So let's say it's a multi-class. So these are the different regions of each of the class, you know, one, two, three. So uh, we start from here and we try to cross the boundary, first class, then second and third, and you know we we go through these different classes. So this is the way the method works. So we have input points x classifier k hat, and this is the norm perturbation, and we have desired accuracy and so on. So we want to output the universal perturbation vector v. So we initialize v with zero, and um, while this um, is not true, the fooling rate is not achieved, then we want to have this loop. So if the class of the X and class of perturb same, then we want to compute the minimal perturbation that sends, sends XI plus V to decision boundary. And um, then um, we get that uh, R and we, that will come delta vi, uh, and we want to do this so that their, their class is not the same. And uh, then we want to take that um, perturbation and we want to project it so that it is within the norm and, and that's it. So um, that is the algorithm. So now here is the fooling rate. So here, we want to say we want to count all the <clears throat> all the cases where the k hat for x i and k hat for the perturbed x i is not the same. We want to call that, and that is uh, uh, gave us our the fooling rate. So uh, that was the thing that if the fooling rate this is less than one minus de delta, we want to keep doing that, and that's the idea here. Then also, this is a projection that we get the V, but we want to find out V prime so, so that um, this, uh, <clears throat> within, this is within the norm, the P norm here. This is our definition was given the epsilon. So that is the universal perturbation because we are going to go through the, all the classes. So um, this perturbation is added here and um, that's, and, and it seems it works pretty well. So one last thing I want to talk about, we will probably go a couple of minutes uh, longer, um, is that how we can defend the perturbation. There's a very interesting paper in CBPR 18 from our collaborators in the University of Western Australia. So the idea is that um, we have several images, distribution of clean images, and um, clean images I see. And so we want to, um, um, 
in deep models, take the clean image and have a label L. And um, this is the universal perturbation row. And we want to do again, that class of clean image is not the same as class of perturbed image. And again, the fooling ratio and so on. So as we talked about earlier, so fooling ratio and LP norm and so on. So, um, so the, we want to seek a detector uh, which can tell us that if, if this has perturbation or not, and then we want to rectify so that we want to remove the perturbation, okay? And uh, method is very simple, and uh, that's why they have a lot of citations. So let's say um, we have these clean images and we, we put the perturbation to that and we add perturbation to clean image. So from here, we get a clean image and here you get a perturbed image. And so we have a network here. And so you want to rectify, we want to get a rectified image. So, so that the, when we get, when we put the target image, it, it gives the right label. So it was a dog. When you add to the perturbed image, it may say airplane, but we want to take that image, rectify it, and it should still be dark. So now, how do we train this one? So what we are gonna do is we will have the, this classifier, the binary classifier, which will tell us if it is a clean image or it's a perturbed image. So to this one, we will have the image coming on the perturbed image and rectified image come here. And uh, also it will have input from here, a clean image and rectified image. So it'll have two inputs. And we know because we are gonna train this one, we'll take the known images, we'll add the perturbation. We will uh, know which is a clean, which is the perturbed. And we can train this one and we can train this one and we will not do anything to this. This is our targeted network. We'll freeze that and uh, it actually works pretty well. So here are some examples. So this is the original image. So it was our class, 99% classification by KFNet, perturbed image. It goes to the um, wooden spoon and then we rectified and then put the network at say our class. Uh, this is um, same thing here. I changed to pencil box and then change back to the correct label. Here is the um, bee eater, then the green snack, and then bee eater. Um, same one here and then cardigan and then same label. Uh, J, mask and J, um, bell pepper, something else and bell pepper. Okay, so um, I think that's the end. So I want to thank um, these people for the slides uh, they have generated.